Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video, and we're going to be talking about the upcoming event, which will likely be here on the 22nd, because that is when the live stream that they <laughs> announced is going to be, so we can always assume that is when Tungus Gus Gange Sanctuary is going to be getting. Um, the, the, the stream is on the 22nd, but then I think pretty sure we go into maintenance and then they will technically start on the 23rd at midnight for me anyway i have no idea how it works on your side of the field so we're gonna look at the event real quick uh this is an extremely important event this requires you to clear avalon le Fay. uh i'm also going to be talking about some actual spoilers into the event itself because this is a raid fight and this is you're going to need to know some of the raid details if you're going to be fully prepared for it so if you want to just click off and instead want to just like yo yo go for the win and do it blind i would suggest you can go off here if you want to know my opinion about whether you should summon on this banner or not yeah it probably depends if you like these characters sure if you think that your box isn't strong enough and will need the craft essences that give attack bonuses because there will be no attack bonus ce except for this one i think actually i can check that real quick by looking at the main quests except for this one three ce that's basically it which gives 20 percent regular and then when you max limit break it it's 30 percent so that's it so otherwise you're good to click off so let's get into it so first uh this is tunguska this is going to be showing up on the 22nd you need to have cleared lost belt 6 because this is where um in lost belt 6 this is where vich uh goes to after she got uh damaged in lost belt 6 I'm pretty sure anyway. I think that's the setup for it, um, based off of what happened in Lost Belt 6. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm assuming. I actually don't know the story of the event itself, because I like to keep that stuff uh, hidden until I'm there. So in terms of the banner, this is the banner. It's going to feature Taigong Wong and Dobrynya Nikitich. I pronounced that name so wrong. So terribly wrong, forgive me. Uh, and then there's also going to be limited raid up craft essences, which is Empty Garden, Turning of Tides, and the Street of Eternal Slumber, as well as new. There's going to be new craft essences added to the banner, but they're not on raid up. The Saint, uh, the Saintess of Winter, the Garden of Caretakers, and the Hamahur, Ham, Hamahara Academy Student Council President. Okay, this guy. Uh, which yeah, these are news brand new CEs that you will hopefully maybe get or not get. But the thing that's actually important is are these CEs, because like I said at the beginning, there is no, typically in a raid style event, they give you the 100% raid damage one for free. There's not any of that here. Uh, you have to pull <laughs> for your damage CEs. Uh, Empty Garden gives 80% and 100% when, when max limit broken. And it also gives specifically for this event, Party Bond up to 30% and when it's max limit broken 35% uh, turning of tides uh, which is the 4 CE gives 50% and then when it's max limit broken 65% and the party bond up is 20% and 25% when max limit broken and the street of the eternal slumber um, this gives 20% and 30% when max limit broken and then the party bond is 10% and maximum broken 15% so those are going to be the craft essences. Um, th these raids, from what I can tell from a friend who did them on JP, were very annoying. So if you do not have the damage CE, if you're planning to skip this because you're planning to summon for the other ones, you might want to really look into your strategy and see if you can actually one-turn it. I know I think for the final raid, it... It's not possible to one turn it so you would have to at most do try and do a three turn but it's very difficult this is all kind of stuff that you have to think about when you're going into the event i think the fact that these ce's are actually <laughs> related to this these might actually be some of the more important ce's to actually go into the event just to make the, gr the grinding easier i guess it all depends on your box at that point you're gonna have to maybe it's best to see how you're handling the raids when they start and then <laughs> if you start getting your ass kicked it might be better to just kind of maybe look and see if you can maybe snatch one of them i think if you're able to get empty garden and you get an 80 percent damage seed you should be fine now that being said if you have the black grail uh and the things to support the black grail i think that should be fine because black grail gives 80 percent to np damage and then the most you will likely get with Empty Garden is 80%. So that will be enough to make up for the damage. And in theory, you should be able to one-turn it with minimum just this. So if a, I think with one Black Grail, it should be possible. I think anyway. I'm looking forward to seeing for myself. <laughs> I think I actually am going to have to change my mind. I think I was grinding up Quartz for... Uh, try one more time to go for... 
um, uh, Melu Saiyan. And then I think I saw the Party Bond thing, which I didn't know about the Party Bond thing until I looked at it. Now I'm actually a little bit more interested in the Party Bond. I wouldn't mind getting that, so I think I might actually end up summoning. Plus, I actually do want the 4-star that is on this banner, which is Dabrinya. Now, I, I'm going to go over Taigong Wong. Nabrinya, I should say for her, she is not limited, so she's going to be in every banner going forward. So if you're going, if you just specifically want her, it might be better to just kind of wait. This is advice that I will not be taking because this is the unit that I badly want, but at least when I was looking at this banner, I'm at least saying I actually kind of want a CE to see if I can make it. And because I want, and because I want either a CE or the 4, that means I'm going to instantly just get Taigong Wong. But anyway, let's go over Taigong Wong real quick. He is a writer. He is two quick, two arts, one buster. Uh, his active skill for the first one is... Uh, it's weird, I've never said that. His skills, his first skill is the Origin Art of War A+. It increased the party quick performance for three turns. Increased the party attack for three turns. Increased the party's MP damage for three turns. 15%, 15%, and 50% to all three of those with a seven turn cooldown. His second skill is God's Execution B. Seals all enemy skills for one turn. Increases his own damage against divinity enemies for three turns. And then increase own damage against demonic enemies for three turns. The d divinity and demonic damage is 50%. Really, that's kind of crazy. Cooldown is 6. Third skill, the Philosophy Keys Crest EX. Charges on MP gauge. Charges party's MP gauge. It's a 30% to him and 20% to the party on a cooldown of 6. His passive skills are writing A+, increase to own quick performance by 11%. Uh, his third skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude. And his noble phantasm is the rank EX, God Smiting Whip, the Dashen Beyond. Rank EX hits 6 times, uh, quick, it deals damage to all enemies, and then it deals an 150% extra damage to divinity enemies. Its MP damage at level 1 is 600%, and if you get them all the way to MP5 somehow, it's 1,000. And then he also reduces their quick resistance for 3 turns. The charge is... Uh, the quick resistance down is 20%, and if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it is 40. And that is my dude here, Taigong Wong. So, what I'll say is, is that he seems to be great if you are fighting someone who is Divinity. And I've recently learned from using um, Summer Nobu for... Um, the Nobu Raids, this ability is actually crazy because there's a lot of divinity based <laughs> enemies in the game and a lot of them end up being challenge quest or raid type fights. In this raid itself, the final raid boss is going to be a divinity class uh, servant. So he'll be dealing 150% just off the top and then he'll also be doing an additional 50% right here. And if they're not divinity, he could also do it to demonic. And if they just so happen to be divinity demonic, then they are taking so much damage at that point. They're taking 250% damage just from him. Uh, obviously the, from NP it's 250% and then they're just getting dealt 100% damage from his normal attacks. That's pretty good for a single target servant, I'd say. And the one negative that I usually have for quick servants is that um, it can be a little bit tough to get back their NP gain, but it looks like he shouldn't have that problem because his NP hits six times, which is a perfectly respectable amount of times. Um, and he also has the ability here to charge his own MP gauge, and then it also charges the party's MP gauge, so that is effectively a 50% MP charger. But then also when you're using it with Scotty, you're going to be able to also pump up your Scotties just a little bit, which is going to be pretty nice. And also because he's Ryder, he instantly gets crit stars, so he will get every single crit star that they drop. So I would say that's a pretty d decent servant in my eyes. Definitely worth it to have for. Uh... I, if you're someone who likes him, you are definitely going to want. You're going to be able to use him a whole bunch to fight a bunch of divinity dudes, um, which seems to be his main purpose here. So that's pretty cool. Actually, seems kind of perfectly built for this raid here, <laughs> which is uh, fitting. Actually, let me see real quick for Nick and uh, Debrinia over here to see if she has anything similar to that. I wonder if she's single target or if she's AoE. Uh, she's AoE, okay. And then increased charges on MP gauge of 20%, crit damage against dragons. Okay. Interesting. Very good. Okay. That's the banner itself. Again, I've said before, if you want to summon on this banner, it's really going to depend on how much you want Taigong Wong, how much you want Debrinia, how much you want the CEs, and how much trouble you are having with the raids. I would assume here that for most people who are going to be optimally trying to kill these raid bosses as quickly as they can, they will be using these craft essences. 
it, but if you're not using them i still think it should be possible it's just gonna be harder you're just gonna have to work harder <laughs> that's the main thing here but anyway that's the banner free free to tell me if you plan to summon i really do like nebrania i really hope i'm able to get her from the multi i'm gonna i'm crazy grinding up all my interludes now all the interludes sqs that i have saved i'm going for them but anyway, now let's go into the actual uh, fight itself, which are all raid bosses. Uh, there are going to be main quests that you can see here, Act 1, Act 2, and here's the spoiler thing, Act 3, Act 4, and then Act 5, you see, it's it's, it's a full-on Act story thing here that you're going to have to keep up with if you're going to want to eventually get to all the raids and stuff like that. Um, in terms of the raid quests themselves, these are the ones on Raid 1, which should happen on the 23rd at um this is at login not at login what is how am i forgetting it yeah right one <laughs> i can't believe i'm forgetting the name of it right now but at login when it resets at reset there you go at reset that's when this raid should start which is going to be the first raid which is going to be based off of ivan from lost belt Wolf, the first lost belt where you'll be finding a writer boss at his three forms which is demonic beast phantasmal beast and divine beast he has uh, 5,200,000 000 HP um, at the Demonic Beast level. At the Phantasmal Beast level, it's 7,200,000. 000. At the Divine Beast level, it's 9,500,000. 000. And the things that he does should stay consistent between all of them. So what he has in terms of the fight itself is that he has a strange arrangement which exists inside the domain of a demonic form. Domain of the Thunderous Emperor, which is an NP resist, one hit, unremovable. That means no matter what, the first NP will be doing reduced damage. Domain of the Thunderous Emperor, which is a skill seal immunity. And then at the start of battle, you're also going to get Cherishing Cage. It gives uh, Hamande Servants? Well, I don't know what that is. Uh, damage up to 1,500 and Demonic Beast Servants. Damage cut of 500, I guess this is... Yeah, servants. Oh my god, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many for this type of servant. That's almost every servant. Uh, anyway. They'll get damage up to 1,100, and then if you're using a Demonic Beast Servant, they get a damage cut. Uh, Orochi's support, Serpent God's Protection, gives all allies attack up for five turns. That is unremovable, which is pretty nice. And yeah, the best way to kind of take down this one is that you're going to have to actually hit him with two NPs if you're going to want to one turn him. Which is the first NP is there to take down his NP resistance, and then the second NP is there to actually kill him. With the support um, for Buster Quick and arts the best one you would probably want to do this with is actually vich the reason is is that vich actually has an aoe so it's actually and she deals bonus damage to ivan so i guess that will help a little by you doing a little bit more damage so you'll be able to take down his np resistance and then you'll bring in your second one which will be able to do it which the the obvious big buster gorilla for assassin to take down a rider would be king asan which would be pretty useful right there but that's his fight right there, and um, yeah, this, I don't know how long it's going to last. So for us, which is going to start on the 23rd, on JP, it took them about an hour and 40 minutes, an hour and 48 minutes to take down this raid. We are not as fast as JP. That does not mean that I don't think this thing is not dying, like, th maybe three hours. <laughs> maybe two hours at most is how long this raid is going to last. So get in there and start preparing your teams now, and be ready to jump from the go, because you're not going to have a whole bunch of time to actually kill him. And that is the first raid boss. The second raid boss is the raid of Vovoda. Weird. It's based on Sutter, though. And Sutter has Demonic, Phantasmal Beast, and Divine Beast. Similar to Ivan, he has five, he has five at the start, seven on Phantasmal Beast, and nine, thousand, nine on uh, Vovoda. I mean Divine Beast, sorry. My brain is all out of whack. Uh, oh, I should mention the drops. Okay, so the drops that you would get from Ivan are... Uh, Cursed Beast Colix, the Permafrost Ice Crystals, the ho Horseshoes... The Hero's Proof, The Secret Gems of Ryder, all three gems of Ryder, 
and then 200k, 350k, and 3 million QP, but that changes depending on what difficulty you're fighting at. If you're fighting at Divine Beast, you have a chance of getting 3.8 million. So there you go. <laughs> that is the main difference. Obviously, some of the drops also get better depending on how you fight them. Um, and you'll also get different bond points and QP and EXP as well. Uh, with the bond points, eh, it's negligible. I think if you can beat them on the easiest difficulty, I think you should just focus on that. Um, and yet, yeah, yeah, just focus on that. Anyway, next raid. Sorry, there's a lot to go through. I want to get through this without making this video like three hours long. Anyway, back to Sutter. His drops are the Scarab of Wisdom, the, oops, the Yarn Ball, the Rainbow Yarn, the Aurora Steel, Dragon Fangs, and then Saber Gems, as along with the same number of QP, 200k, 350k, and 3 million. Uh, in terms of his gimmick, what he does is that he ha applies Scorching Hot Physique, he grants self an on attack activated buff of 30% chance to inflict burn, with 500 damage for 3 turns to enemies when normal attacking, he's immune to burn status, he increases own damage against divinity enemies by 50%, he also exists inside the domain with a demonic form. Um, his mental debuff immunity, he's Im immune to mental debuffs. Uh, he has a freezing membrane, which makes him immune to just debuffs in general. <laughs> I guess he just, to be double sure you're not hitting him with any debuff, he's not affected. He has Domain of Fire and Ice, which is art, Arts card resistance up, two hits, unremovable. Buster card resistance up, two hits, unremovable. You'll notice he does not have Quick Arts resistance. <laughs> He doesn't have that, uh, so if you want to hit him with the arts and with or with Buster, you're gonna have to make sure that you hit him with both of those before you hit him with the NP to one turn him. And then the Domain of Fire and Ice and Burn Status chance down Water Side. He has a 500% reduced chance to be inflicted by Burn Status when the Water Side Field Buff is active. And then at the start of battle, we'll get Cherish and Cage, which is the same thing we got there at the beginning. And then we'll also get Rorochi Support, which is the increase to damage for all party members again by 15%. Was it 15% previously last time? They didn't mention, but now we're saying for this one it's 15%. And there you go. Uh, he's going to be a saber type fight, so if you have the right things to go here, then you should be able to fight him. I don't remember Sutter being that much of a pain, but I think it should be possible. It, the, the one big pain here is that if you do not have a quick... Now actually, that I think about it, do we have a quick archer? I should. Yes, I should. <laughs> now I'm thinking about what am I going to do for this, but I, sh I should be. It should be possible. Either a quick archer or a quick berserker of some kind. Something to take down a saber. Um, hmm, okay. Next raid. Now, this one is uh, interesting because it is raid 3, the Strange Retainer Swarm. Basically, oh, also, how long did this take for JP to kill? Uh, a little bit longer, 2 hours and 46 minutes. So they took a little bit longer on this one. So that should buy us just a little bit more time here. But I still think that means that he's dying in a, he's dying before the, the end of the day. <laughs> he, is, he is not seeing towards midnight. Next, the, stange, the Strange Retainer Swarm, which this was on Christmas Day on JP. And it will likely be the same for us. Um, these come out in different waves. It starts at reset and then... 20 minutes later and then again 20 minutes later and then finally again 20 minutes later again because it comes down in five there's five waves so the first two waves both happen exactly at reset then 20 minutes later the third wave is released and then 20 minutes later the fourth wave is released and then finally the fifth wave is released 20 minutes later and there's a whole bunch of different fighters and retainers to fight uh, retainers 1, 2, th uh, 1, 3, 4, 5, L, W, B, M, 8, and H, W, B, M, 8. Um, and this lasts, on J I'm actually kind of interested, did this last to the end of Christmas Day? It, it almost made it to midnight, but it did not make it to midnight. <laughs> just, it was off by just a couple minutes, but it did take them significantly longer for this one, probably because it was much more to fight in this one. But anyway, uh, Retainer 1, uh, it's a Berserker fight. On Retainer 2, it is an Archer fight. On Retainer 4, it is another Berserker fight. On Retainer 5, it is a Rider fight. On LWB M8, it is a three Assassin enemies. On HWB M8, it is a Ruler type uh, enemy. And in terms of what they do at the start of battle, Cherishing Cage, we get that. We get now we get Nikita supports Brave uh, Warriors Feasts, which is an increase to NP damage and critical damage of all party members. 
And then Retainer uses Beast Command, gives all allies attack up to 20%, and then Evade two times, sure hit, and sure hit on enemy servants with Wild Beast trait Demerit. Um, so there you go. And I don't see any specific gimmicks, so you're just going to be trying your best to fight all of them. Each one of them have different levels of HP to them. The Retainers look like to be the weakest to me because um, they are... Th it's a three... You're fighting three dudes, but the highest dude on there has 26, uh, 290,070 something thousand HP. Um, I just completely butchered that. 297769 HP. That's how much HP the retainer has. And it's all on one wave. So in theory, uh, this one's also quick. So an AoE, and the other two are Berserker. So an AoE Archer should be able to handle this no problem. And the drops that it has is the War Horse's Immature Horn along with the Stimulus Gunpowder. And then Saber Gems and Berserker Gems and the same amount of QP as the other ones. On the second retainer, it has a single boss fight. It's a uh, uh, 58k HP. The Dawnlight Reactor Core, the Magical Fluid, and Archer Gems are the drops for this one. For the next retainer, which is Retainer 4, it's another 3 Berserker fight. And the drops here are going to be Arrowhead of Melody. The Arrowhead. I don't. I never knew the other part of Arrowhead. I just knew. I just called it the Arrowhead. The Black Tallow, or the plot, or the the pot, and then gems for Berserker. On Retainer Five, it is a writer boss, and this one has seven hundred seven hundred thousand HP. Seven hundred thousand eight hundred and forty-six uh, HP. And he drops Comet Shard, so this thing is dying first, is what it's telling me right there. And then it also drops Chains of the Fool. Yeah, this thing is not living. Um, along with Rider Gems. For LWB M8, it is another 3 boss, but this time they're all Assassins. And the highest Assassin one has uh, uh, 400,000 HP. The notable drops are the Primordial Lanagu, the Idrisil Seed, and then Assassin Gems. And then finally for the ruler fight, which is HWP M8, uh, 600,000 HP. He drops shells, he drops the, the Langua, and then he drops gems of every single type. Uh, no, not every single type. It is Rider, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker. And those are the fights for retainers. So yeah, those are comes in different waves. And then it looks like on the wave one, it's every single one of them. Actually, no, it's not. On wave one, it's retainer four, retainer one, retainer four, LWB AM8, <laughs> retainer four. And then on wave two, it's retainer one, retainer five, retainer one, retainer four, retainer three. On wave three, then it goes down to retainer three, LWB M8, retainer three, LW8 M8. And then by wave four, it's just HW. Bead M8, Retainer 1, and Retainer 5, and then when you get to Wave 5, in the final wave, it is Retainer 1, Retainer 5, and HWB M8. So that is what is to be expected. This is going to be happening on Christmas. Uh, at least it's at reset, so hopefully by that point you will have your Merry Christmas times with your families and stuff like that, and you won't have to worry about this too much. But yeah, kind of keep track on this one. Maybe just try and find the one. This seems like the actual easiest raids out of all of them because none of them have like insane HP, at least compared to the hardest levels where there's like no three difficulties. It's just them. Uh, and the max number of kills for all of them are for... No, all of them are different levels of kills. For Retainer 1, it's 400,000 uh, kills. For Retainer 3, it's 600,000 kills. For Retainer 4, it is 500,000 kills. For Retainer 5, it's 500,000 kills. For uh, LW8 and M8, it's 400,000 kills. And then for max rate HP, it's 800,000 kills. So, okay. And then finally, the final raid fight, which happens on December 26th, the day after Christmas. It is, and I'll reset, it is Beast 4. And this is unheard of, but this raid took at least a day. Yeah, based on this, this took them at least over a day to complete. Because you need uh, 30 million kills in total to take this down. <laughs> so, I think this is actually maybe the longest I've ever seen JP take to kill a raid that was just a single raid boss. So, damn. But even then, it still took a day, which is not that much. 
but at least that means that you will likely have on the NA side more time. Because again, typically we just don't go as hard into the paint as the JP players do. We still go hard into the paint, just not on the same level as JP does. Theirs barely lasts like 10, 10, 10 to 20 minutes at times. Anyway, and this is the fight with the Beast with Beast 4. And this one we will be fighting Lost, Be Lost Belt Beast 4 um, along with all the retainers. <laughs> On the existence uh, difficulty, it will be Retainer 2, Retainer 4, Retainer 2, Retainer... No, it's not Retainer 4, it's Retainer 6. Uh, retainer 6, Retainer 2, and Retainer 6. So that means when you take down one of the Retainers, they will be replaced with another one. On Massacre, it looks to be the same, except for the HPs are much higher. Uh, and in Cherishment, it seems to be the same. Uh, with the biggest HP buff obviously being to Beast 4 itself... With seven, oh, close to 800k HP on the easiest difficulty, when you get the Cherishment difficulty, she has over 1,700,000 HP, getting pretty close to the halfway point of almost 7,500,000 uh, HP. It is... Uh, it's a beast for a reason, and beasts are hard to fight. Uh, the drops themselves, it is the Spirit Root. It's Bizarre Wine, it's the Mirror, it's the Snake Jewel, it's the Hero's Medal, it's the Giant's Ring, it's the Scales of Fantasia, it's the Tiny Bell of Amnesty, and it is gems for um, Saber, Archer, Lancer, uh, Rider, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker, each class that you need to fight a beast, except for the Red Gems for some reason. The Red Gems don't drop from this, but only the golden and the blue gems and then qp 150k 200k 350k and 4.2 million for the highest difficulty on the least highest it is 3.4 million and that will be the final raid and when when this is done that's it um and then in terms of the things that actually drop beast 4 has a chance to drop either the mirror the scales of fantasia the metal or the snake jewel along with the 250k class gem of all three rarities in all seven classes that's random uh the retainers drop the spirit root the tiny bell of amnesty or the caster gem the retainer 2 dropped the wine the giant's ring and the lancer and the lancer gems um with 150k uh, qp from each of them in terms of what the <laughs> bosses themselves do Beast 4 has offensive class advantage against the Monday servants and defensive class disadvantage against demonic beast servants. Um, Hex of the Enshrined Deity, 500% chance to grant self curse of 20,000 damage and reduces his own defense by 30%. Massacre existing uh, meteorite decreases all friend party members' HP max percentage base when attacking. Retainer 2 and Retainer 4 have strange retainers, exist inside the domain of a demonic form. Massacre Existence Meteorite, when this unit is defeated, increase Lost Belt 4's max HP by 100,000, one time, unremovable. Retainer 6 has the same passes as Moss and Avalon Le Fay. At the start of the battle, Vicinity of Cherishment gives Humunday Servants damage up to 2,000, and Demonic Beast Servants damage cut of 1,000. Um, support from Taigong Wang, the Kunyin Fang Shu. Gives all party members special damage up 10% against divinity enemies, 5 turns, unremovable, and special damage up 10% against demonic enemies, 5 turns, unremovable, and then all parties gain Massacre Existence Meteorite. When this unit is defeated, grant all enemy units attack damage up and recovers their HP by 50,000. Battle ends when Lost Belt's... Um uh, Lost, Belt's, <laughs> Lost Belt Beast 4 is defeated, but drops are affected by the other units that have been defeated. So if you do not defeat the other dudes, the fight will end if you beat Beast, but you will not get these drops if she... If you did not kill them before she died. So if you want to get everything, you would 3 turn it. But almost... I, I, unless you're at a very specific build, I'm not seeing you deal... Actually, it's possible to deal close to over 2 million damage, actually. So who knows? Either way, with the classes being obviously Beast, Lancer, Caster, Lancer, uh, Lancer for Retainer 2, and Caster for Retainer um, uh, 6. 
And yeah, those are the bosses. These fights are not going to be easy. They expect you to have beaten Lost Belt 6. If you beat Lost Belt 6 by simply just spamming non-stop the, the, the things they gave you so you could continue the fight, you're going to have a very tough time with this. Don't feel bad about fighting on the easiest difficulty and getting what you can. Get what you can from these raids. Don't... I know a lot of people are going to be trying to go for the highest difficulty, but to be honest, you should just try and do what you can, get what you can, and then get out of here because these raids just don't last very long. It's better to prioritize speed if you can't go for the big kill like with some of the other ones. Don't start. <laughs> it's too late now. You should have been preparing this for basically the entire year. But anyway, that's what it's looking like. In terms of the actual, this is also important. The event bonus, which is going to be 100% damage up to Taigong and uh, Nobrinia over here, along with a bond bonus. The 100% damage up will be very useful if you're going to be fighting the beast. Because um, again, Taigong seems to be just fully built to be able to handle this fight with his insane amount of divinity and demonic <laughs> beast fighting. 50% um, damage up and 20% uh, bonus bond goes to Ibuki, Da Vinci, uh, Habitrot, a Tamamo and Tamamo Cat. 30% damage and 20% bond bonus go to uh, Bird, Benny Emma, Vargist, uh, Richia. For some reason, Tamamo Lancer gets less damage bonus. <laughs> they gave the damage bonus to the caster, but not to the Lancer. Sure. Um, Melusain gets the 30%. Uh, Taiga Jaguar Warrior gets 30%. Uh, Red Hair gets 30%. Miss Crane gets 30%, Kyo Koyo gets 30%, or Dinosaur uh, Wife gets 30%, uh, Asterius gets 30%, uh, Hisen Lobo gets 30%, Kiara, Summer Kiara specifically gets 30%, and Gorgon gets 30% damage up. Uh, in terms of 50% damage up and 5% bond bonus to all party members, that goes to MASH, and only MASH. She didn't have a Christmas bonus, but she does have a bonus for this raid fight, so let's go. Yeah, get, uh, there's not a lot of time here. As you, as, as I've said previously, a lot of these raids, the only raid I expect to last longer than a single day is going to be Beast 4. If we take, if we beat it faster than we, than JP beat it, I'm going to be surprised. 30 million kills is a lot of kills for a raid beast that has 2 million HP. <laughs> that is insane absolutely crazy um the others um are all going to be kind of dependent on a lot of things i really don't see well the reset does happen where most people are going to be likely done with christmas christmas eve might be another different thing i don't know we'll see again i don't expect that one two and three to last very long at most they'll last if I were to guess, Raid 1 would last maybe like two hours. Raid 2 maybe last three hours. Raid 3 would last into past midnight for for us, so probably close to four hours, maybe five hours. And then we'll take at least a day for the final and fourth raid. In terms of units that you should be probably building up for this, it's the obvious ones. Um, you should be building up um, the... Support caster, the support buster, the support for arts. Um, for arts, it's obviously it's Castoria and it's Tamamo. For quick, your only real salvation here is Scotty. For buster, you have uh, Merlin, you have uh, Vich. And then for your all purpose general supports, you have Waver, you have Oberon. Oberon can't be used with Merlin, so keep that in mind if you want to use Merlin. You can't use him with Oberon, but Oberon would be very clutch for this one because of his insane, stupid, crazy increase to uh, damage for a single turn, and then your unit just basically dies right afterwards. Um, and funny enough, Santa Marfa would be pretty alright for this because Santa Marfa gives a bonus to fighting Demonic and Divine, I think. Uh, let me be double sure here. Ah, uh, da 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 always helps to be double share but yeah santa marva if you have her specifically mp5 some people were likely not able to get her to mp5 but at mp5 she gives 50 percent to demons divinity or the undead um 
because of the strange arrangement I think a lot of these forms have demonic forms, so I'm going to assume every single one of these are demonic. If I'm wrong about that, please feel free to correct me, because I would also like to know that before going in. But I'm going to take it that strange arraignments means that all these dudes that we're fighting have the demonic trait, because typically they do not have the demonic trait on them, which you can see right here uh, with Suter over here. Uh, he has basic traits of evil, giant, humanoid, super large, and dragon when he is Fenrir. Um... So that makes me assume that the version that is in this raid fight will specifically have demonic because of this ability. So that would mean Santa Marfa would actually be pretty key for this. And 50% will help a whole bunch. Then she also gives increases the party attack by 20%. Listen, you make do what you can. I was able to use her to farm up um, a lot of the Lotto stuff without using... With using only a friend Oberon and then also using no support busters casters or anything like that or quick so i think it's a, a solid choice if you're someone who just has nothing <laughs> they feel like they have nothing i think you have some you have martha you have santa martha and you have the kindness of your friends list <laughs> to get you through this and trust me we are all going to be trying to get through this we're all going to try and grind as much as we can it's going to be pretty tough um in terms of things i'm thinking of i'm currently going into this trying to figure out what i'm going to do it's a good thing I know now about Ivan because this part really makes me feel like, okay, for this one I'll probably use a buster type team. For the next raid I'll probably do something like... This is also something to kind of keep in mind as when you are building your team. So I mentioned Oberon. He has an NP, but if your unit does not have an ability to get through the invulnerability that he gives right afterwards, um, <laughs> you're going to have a little bit of trouble. So make sure if you're using Oberon to take down the MP resistance, your next unit has the ability to pierce through invincibility to actually damage them. Just something to keep in mind. But anyway, that is this event. Uh, it's going to be a raid event. The actual duration of the event itself lasts until the 31st uh, because it's possible for you to start late and then you won't have to fight any of these raids. You'll fight some of these bosses, but you won't be grinding them like everyone else is here. Um... So I wish you guys the best of luck, both in the raids and if you're summoning. I'll probably release a summon video, we'll see. Um, knowing that the raids don't start immediately on the day that it's released is a big help. <laughs> that means I have at least a day. That means I can likely have that up there and then get myself ready for it. I've been preparing basically the entire time for this. I have all my supports are basically ready. I have Santa Martha ready on standby. I have Oberon ready. I have. I'm currently building up some of my other... Um, single target servants that would usually go unused because I don't really do very many challenge quests for the most part but they are basically key for this and that means that I should have them ready to go um, Benny Enma will be a pretty nice one because Benny Enma actually has a uh... oh no it's only chaotic and evil I was thinking of demonic and something else I think actually the, the final raid boss is demonic and evil now, now that I think about it uh, are you e demonic and evil? Yeah, you don't have any alignments, unfortunately, Mr. Yaga. But you, you're chaotic and evil. There you go, perfect. Unfortunately, you also don't have <laughs> this ability here, which is a uh, demonic beast servants. Oh wait, no. Um, where she has class advantage against these type of servants is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Now that I look at that, it looks like the Hamunde servants are actually bad now that i look at this yeah the cherishing cage that means all of my servants that are Hamunde take an additional damage but then the demonic beast servants get damage cut instead so these are the demonic beast type servants interesting i will figure it out feel free to leave down what you are going to be playing what your plants are currently doing especially if to help out a lot of people i try and help out the most i can here but my really my base advice here is that yo get ready and <laughs> get ready for it uh build up your units and wish for the best in terms of actual team comp i won't know until i'm actually in there i can only kind of guess and kind of think of like oh yeah vich i can use for this and then the one before actually reading what ivan did i was like well obviously i'm just going to use um comma but unfortunately scotty does not have an np that deals damage so i would need to get a little bit creative and maybe switch out scotty and put in a unit that can quickly shoot off their np and then kind of go from there i'll figure it out i'll see i'll see 
And yeah, these don't last very long, so it's going to be very tough to actually, like, provide help. Because by the time I release a video and do something, it's just not going to be enough. Yeah, f 4 million kills on this first one, and he they took this long. They took, <laughs> they took basically an hour and 48 minutes to kill it. That is no time at all. It's just not an 8 million kill. <laughs> it is the only one that's lasting for very long is that 30 million ones. But anyway, I've talked long enough. I'll see you guys in the next video. Best of luck to you guys. I'm going to go back to actually work now. Um, I didn't say it at the beginning of the video because there was a lot to talk about, but if you made it here to the end of the 40 minutes, thank you very much. As always, you can leave a like and comment. It does help a whole bunch. Uh, subscribing also does help. Um, and yeah, you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys later. Peace out and goodbye.